All right, this is a slideshow that's about the experiences of mixed status Latino and Latina families that I would share with the staff. Um, mixed status means that either the parents are undocumented and the children are documented or vice versa, but the whole family is, does not have the same status in the US. So this is information that st staff needs to understand and suggestions of what they can do to assist these families. So background of the problem, um, there are about 44.8 million people that were born in for foreign lands, and this is a statistic from 2018. Um, about, of that, about 16 million are of mixed status, which undocumented and documented family members. And then there's 9 million children with undocumented parents. And of those, about half of them are actually U.S. citizens. So this video is about Esperanza and her experiences with immigration policies. So I would ask the staff to watch a video and then think about how was she impacted by our policies we have in place at this point in this country. So now we're looking at the background of the problem. So in 2018, there were about 337,000 people that were deported. The chart on the side shows it broken down by nationalities as of 2018. As you can see, many of the countries where people are deported are Spanish-speaking countries, and the biggest um, or the most impacted country appears to be Mexico, with a little over a third um, of those immigrants going back, being deported back to Mexico. So it's not always the actual deportation or detention itself, it's also the fear around it, being separated, hearing other people's stories, and those can be traumatic. Um, the children feeling like, hey, I don't want to be considered Hispanic, or I don't want to be thought of as coming from another country because they realize what that means, well, they have a perception of what that means. Um, because of the myth that is perpetuated that immigrants are somehow bad, they think that they're bad because they are immigrants. So they're very aware if you're considered quote unquote legal or you're considered undocumented, what that means, what privileges you have. Um, they don't want other people to know that they are immigrants and sometimes are shamed into thinking that their culture is bad or their language is bad, their native language. Um, this image came from a story about a girl who was taught in school that her language was bad and she felt ashamed of it. So what can happen? Not necessarily everybody is deported. Um, you can be detained in detention facilities. Uh, you can sign up for a voluntary removal. So I am going to go back to my native country. Um, then there's involuntary deportation and the problem of the family. What's going to happen is if it's dad that's being deported, is mom going to go or the kids going to go? And if the kids do go, they may not be familiar with that culture. And so that's going to be quite a cultural sh shock for them. And then we look at the burden on our parents. So we're going to have a couple slides about the mother and then look at the father. So we just talk about how it's a financial burden. Uh, maybe mom didn't work before and now she's got two, or maybe there were two incomes and now they just have one, which can bring about insecurity about where they're going to live and how they're going to provide food for their family and then trying to pay the legal fees to keep that family member in this country. So the second slide about the mother, um, here there's a video uh, that speaks to the experiences of two women that were deported and then later reunified with their families. So you worry about your kids, um, the financial burden again, what are you gonna do for childcare now that you're working? 
So before showing the video, I'd ask the staff to think about what are some of the issues that are brought up with deportation and detention, and is there anything we can do as a school to assist these families? Now let's look at the father. So he's suffering because he feels like he can't provide for his family, uh, having a hard time finding a job, which is definitely a blow to his self-esteem. Um, the relationship between the mother and the father may change because now she may be the one that's earning the income where the father was used to being the quote unquote bre breadwinner. Um, they try to remain in contact with their kids, sending money, phone calls, but if those ties are severed, the child could end up resenting the father. And then the reluctance that some parents have to talk about this with their kids. They think they're trying to protect them. They don't want their kids to worry. When the fact is, if they have these discussions with their kids beforehand, they, the kids may be better able to prepare themselves and understand the situation. And if it were to occur, what is gonna happen next? So this is a video called Torn Apart at the US Border about a lady from Guatemala um, who was separated from her family. She moved to America first and then her husband did later on. Um, they have two girls and one boy. The, bo the brother was with the father and they both got to stay in the United States and mom got deported back to Guatemala. The two girls went to go live with foster parents and you'll see a difference in the relationship and the behaviors of the older sister versus the younger sister. So before showing the video, some things to think about. What did you notice in the differences between the two girls and their relationship with their parents? And with the oldest daughter, how did she treat her younger sister? Because we'll get into some slides later, but there are some definite behavior changes within the family and how they treat each other. So what are the consequences for the children? What are the emotional challenges that they're facing? So they can be angry, sad, shame, you know, feel shameful, feel guilty. These are all things that would have been seen in that video that I showed on the previous slide that can also be talked about on this slide, giving some examples. They're aggressive, they're more likely to break the rules at home and school, and they isolate themselves. Again, some of these behaviors can also be uh, tied to the video that was on the slide earlier. So mental health, anxiety, depression, having a hard time sleeping, feeling like they've been abandoned, and uh, post-traumatic stress disorder. So this video talks about toxic stress and how it, um, impairs healthy development. So something that I would ask um, for staff to consider with this is, um, why should we be concerned about mental health obstacles that children face? And how does this tie to what we saw on the slide previously? So health impacts on children. So there's definitely some medical issues. May not want to eat, have trouble sleeping, may be afraid to go to get medical care because they think that the police are gonna come there and take their parents away or the parent that's with them. And food insecurity. So this isn't just about being hungry, it also impacts them academically where they could repeat a grade in elementary school, um, experience deve developmental impairments like with language and motor skills and having more social and behavioral problems. Social challenges, feeling disconnected from their family, losing their friends, just wanting to be by themselves. So it's funny when I think about this, depression leads to this, and then the depression makes this even worse, the feeling of wanting to isolate themselves and feeling disconnected from other people. So it's, it's kind of like a cycle. So our academic impact, so the, the can have positive and negative. Here we talk about the negative impacts, um, and you can read these here, but the video is another um, time to have a discussion and, and think about some things as they watch it. What can we do as teachers to help our students feel safe and accepted in the schools? Because what these kids are doing is talking about what did or did not happen that made them feel safe at school. 
Here we have another video, but this is on the positive academic impact. So giving them access to resources, making them feel supported and that they're in a calm environment to escape the chaos of their lives at home. This teacher talks about her experience dealing with one of her students and just from the other kids in the classroom witnessing this, how it really built a, a community in her class. So long-term impact. There's some long-term impact on the children, but fathers are traumatized because of the arrest. Children and the whole family can view authority figures as the enemy. Uh, a financial impact on the parents with trying to get them back together. And unfortunately, there haven't been enough studies done talking to those that go into foster care or that were sent back to their home countries. So what can the counselors do? There's a variety of resources on this page. Um, the top three bullets are for fa the parents mostly. And the bottom one is a workbook that actually as activities kids can go through to talk through their feelings. What can we do as a school in the administration? Food closets, giving away so that some of that food insecurity goes away. Um, resources, organizations, charities to help pay their bills. Make sure the parents feel comfortable in the school environment. And then considering how we're grading, looking at individual situations. Teachers, allowing the students to turn and work late, listening, don't judge, and don't jump to conclusions about students' misbehavior, being an ally for these kids and their families. So this is all a professional development in the hopes of bringing more awareness um, and reflection upon our practices about what we can do to make these families feel more supported in the school environment.